Okay, so somebody recently asked me about the law of sin. What is the law of sin? And it basically it's just like figurative. Okay. Um, it's only used three times by Paul in Romans. And it's all used, you know, very closely together. Uh, at the end of Romans 7 and the beginning of Romans 8. And, you know, basically, Romans 7, 25, he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So basically, with my mind, I serve God. I serve the righteousness of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin, the wickedness of sin. With the flesh, the flesh serves sin. The mind serves God. Okay. Um, so it's just figurative language, uh, as if sin was reigning, as if sin had a law to follow, then his flesh is following that. Okay. Um, basically, you know, the flesh rules, or sin rules the flesh, God rules the mind. And this Romans 7.25 is at the end of Romans 7. And, you know, those who say that Paul is speaking pre-conversion before he was saved, it makes absolutely no sense because this is like an anticlimactic statement because he'd say, Oh, wretched man that I am, you know, you know, who will deliver me from this body of death or whatever. And then he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that should end it, right? <laughs> But then he says, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So he's saying there's these dual natures that are at war within him as a saved person. Okay. And so here we got Romans 7:23. before that. I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Warring. Okay. There's this battle going on. There's not a battle going on in somebody who's lost. Okay, they love their sin. They don't want to serve God whatsoever. There ain't no battle going on there in a lost person. Okay, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And I just thought about this just before making this video, and I was looking at this. Okay, so there's this war going on that, you know, doesn't happen with lost people. Uh, and it says, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And I'm going to go to Romans 8, too, because there seems to be a contradiction here where it says in Romans 8, 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So how could he be free from the law of sin and death when he's into captivity, the law of sin and death? Okay, well, uh, so there's a war going on here, Romans 7, 23. And previously he says, you know, uh, when I do that which I wouldn't, when I do that which I hate, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. So he makes that distinction that he does not any longer identify with that sinful nature. Uh, but he does still do things that he hates, which is, again, not characteristic of a lost person. Uh, they love their sin, and they don't want to serve God. But... He makes that distinction. It's the sin that dwelleth in me. It's the old man. It's the flesh. It's the old nature. Okay. Um, so, it says here that there's this war. Okay. His members and his mind bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So, this is just a, like a temporary... Uh, you know, temporarily, uh, you know, when he sins and stuff. Um, I think it's interesting to note that, like I said, there's the war going on, but then he says, and bringing me into captivity. Okay, if this is a lost person, they're in captivity from the get-go to sin. Okay, so why would it be saying, bringing me into captivity? Okay. So, Romans 8, 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay. So, he is made free from the law of sin and death, you know, 
overall totally. Okay, he has this, this new nature now. Okay, the spirit, the renewed mind, that is not under the captivity of sin. Okay. Um, so there's that. So I think that's important to note. Um, that says bringing me into captivity. Okay. The lost person isn't brought into captivity. They are under captivity from the get-go. And uh, so this is just temporarily, you know, from the warring when, you know, the flesh wins some battles, uh, but the war is already won from um, being regenerated. Okay, I guess we could see it as that way. But, you know, there's so many reasons that Romans 7, uh, the latter part of it, is Paul speaking as a saved person. We can't uh, take it any other way, because that's just the correct, you know, exegetical interpretation. You know, looking at verse by verse, looking at all the arguments and everything, that's, um, you know, any other position is lacking. So, and uh, anyways, and we know, those of us who are saved, that even after we're saved, we have struggles. And, you know, we're, we're tempted and times we sin. So, and, you know, we confess it and ask for forgiveness, repent of it. But it happens. And it happened with Paul. And that's what that is. And the law of sin is just a figurative thing. Okay, it's just, uh, he's just saying that. You know, the rule of sin. Sin reigning. Okay. So, that's that. God bless.